We all have those moments of frustration with our partner that lead us to act in ways we later regret. Now, we may acknowledge after the fact that there was a healthier way to react or vow to handle things better in the future, but the moment tensions rise and we feel triggered in a particular way, we fling back into the same bad habit. And over time, these messy interactions can actually morph into destructive dynamics. Yet, there is a way to break the cycle and stop ourselves from riding off the rails in our relationships. Stay tuned to find out. What's going on guys? In this episode, I'll show you how to stop yourself losing it with your partner. If you're new to the channel and like personal development, hit that subscribe button. And if at any point you like what you see, give it a little like. The first thing to do is to recognize that when we have a heated reaction to our partner, we are often in a flipped lid state. And in this state, the higher functions of our thinking brain go offline. Now, when we feel triggered emotionally, our middle prefrontal cortex, which is part of our upstairs brain, shuts down and stops working. Now, at the same time, the area below our cerebral cortex, often called our downstairs or emotional brain, fires up. Now, this is why our emotions can suddenly intensify or feel out of control, while our more rational processing and thinking functions seemingly fly out the window. Now, I would argue that all or most of our bad behavior toward ourselves and others happens in this flipped lid state. There are nine functions of our prefrontal cortex that are not functioning well in a flipped lid state. These include body regulation, um, attuned communication, emotional balance and effect regulation, and response, flexibility, empathy, insight or self-knowing awareness, fear modulation um, and morality. It's pretty clear even without diving deep into each of these functions that these are all qualities we could do with when we get into a bit of a, a barney or a conflict with our partner. So what can we do to calm down and reconnect with these higher functions of our brain? Well, the first thing to do in the exact moment when we feel ourselves getting fired up is to notice what is happening in our mind and body. Our brain may perceive a threat and will be telling us it's time for fight or flight. But neither of these is an appropriate reaction to the reality of the situation, and both will most likely lead to trouble. Instead, we need to take pause. Now, we should give ourselves the time to do a calming, predictable, or rhythmical activity that allows our thinking brain to come back online. And this can be walking around the block, counting from 10 backwards, or simply paying attention to our breathing um, in and out. Now, taking a break from the interaction is often a good idea, but should be done calmly and with the expressed intention of reconnecting in a more, more relaxed state. In other words, no storming out and slamming the door. Easier said than done sometimes. Dr. Jack Cornfield and Tara Bratch have described the acronym RAIN as a practice to help us mindfully deal with these kind of instances. So R stands for recognize. Pause and notice what we are feeling. Then you've got A, which is accept, acknowledge, um, and, and that means tolerate and sit with whatever strong emotion is surfacing. Then the I is investigate. So look into our internal experience. And try what Dan Siegel calls sifting through our experience by noting any sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts that may appear or come up. And then you've got the N, which stands for non-identification. And this is resisting the urge to allow our thoughts, feelings, or experiences to define us. Realize that they move through us. If a memory arises, remember that the memory is not happening to us now and does not define who we are. You know, as we get deeper into exploring our reactions, it's valuable to reflect on where our intensified feelings come from because so much of our brain's reactivity is programmed into us by past experiences. We often um, have to discern the source of our feelings in order to make sense of these experiences, and thereby understanding our impulses rather than being at their whim. 
So for example, a certain tone in our partner's voice, a familiar facial expression, or a remnant circumstance can trigger implicit memories from our early history. Now, implicit memories are non-declarative and non-verbal, meaning we don't have a sense of remembering when they are triggered. Instead, we just have a visual feeling of being back in a situation and we experience a bodily imprint of how we felt in the past. Our implicit memories can be like invisible forces causing us distress as we're reminded of old feelings of panic, pain, anger, whatever, confusion. Our big reactions in our adult relationships frequently have to do with this type of memory and unresolved trauma or emotional echoes of the past. We may have felt um, disregarded, scolded, not seen, misunderstood, unloved, distorted or unwanted in our childhood. So we're likely to be especially sensitive to our perceptions of these elements in our adult lives. We may observe or interrupt the words and actions of others to fit with these um, feelings about ourselves and we're hyper reactive as a result. So in this way, the intensity of our emotions in an interaction with our partner can be a clue that we are in a flipped lid state um, provoked by something from our past. And as an adult, we are empowered and capable of communicating on equal ground. So our powerless emotional reactions don't quite fit or make sense. However, as a kid, we were literally at the mercy of others. Now, everything our parents or caretakers um, did felt like a matter of life and death because our survival was in their hands. And in, in an adult relationship, we may intellectually understand that we are not a powerless child anymore, but our downstairs brains, like I said earlier, have this immediate reaction which is tied back to when we were children. But the good news is that this is all possible to get a hold of and these moments of stress you can be removed but you have to work on that try using the rain method as i said earlier to help with this the truth is that we are not perfect and we won't always live up to our own standards therefore the last piece of the puzzle when it comes to handling our flipped lid moments is dealing with the moments when we slip up you know at some point we'll find ourselves reacting before thinking and in these moments it's crucial that we create a real opportunity to repair with our partner regardless of who we feel is right or wrong there is incredible benefit to dropping placing any blame and simply listening to how our partner experienced our outburst we should strive to imagine it from their perspective reflect on what they're saying and acknowledge how what we said made them feel. My challenge for you then guys is the next time you can see the flip lid state coming, use the RAIN acronym as I said. The R was recognize, pause and notice what you are feeling. The A was accept, so tolerate and sit with whatever strong emotion is surfacing and you know, ponder on that. I investigate, so look into your internal experience, sift through your experience by noting any sensations through images, feelings and thoughts um, that may arise or come up. And then N was for non-identification, so resist the urge to allow your thoughts, feelings or experiences to define you. Realise that they move through you. Share your challenge experience with us in the YouTube comments or tag us on Instagram using at Rosa Mindset. That's it for today everyone. If you enjoyed the content and you're new to the channel and you haven't already then maybe hit the subscribe button and give it a little like. And uh, if you'd like to be notified of any more episodes then hit the notification bell. This has been Richard Rosa. Peace out.